Hello and welcome. Bruce Fulton here, School of Information, University of Arizona. This is going to be a very brief rundown uh, of the basic workings of Project Libre. Project Libre is project management software. Uh, it will give you Gantt charts, work breakdown structures, among other things, uh, calculate your critical path. Uh, it'll do some other things in addition to that. I'm just going to outline the very uh, basic mechanics of getting your task list in, um, connecting those uh, to in order to uh, calculate your critical path and, and um, showing you how to enter some resources, adding the resources to your uh, timeline, uh, and then showing you the work breakdown structure. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, you can download the software from sourceforge.net. This is, as I say, open source software, so it's uh, free for you to use. It's um, uh, available for both the PC and the Macintosh, uh, um, the Mac platform. Uh, I, I'm going to demonstrate it on the PC, but it works uh, virtually identically on the Macintosh. So once you get it downloaded uh, and installed on your uh, desktop, um, you know, everything I'm going to show you works on either platform. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at what it looks like when you load it. Uh, the screen's going to look something like this. Let me expand that to take advantage of our full screen here. Uh, when you start a new project, uh, it's going to give you a dialog that looks something like this, uh, probably exactly like this. You can give it a project name. Uh, I'm going to call this our um, digitization project. Uh, you can um, enter a manager. Uh, you can give it a start date. Uh, we'll just start with today's date. That's fine for purposes of uh, demonstration. Uh, most projects are forward scheduled. That is, you start with today, you enter your task lists, uh, enter how long you estimate each task is going to take, uh, and then move forward. It's possible to um, um, uncheck that, do a, a backward schedule, uh, calculate when you need to have it finished by, and then figure backwards to where you need to start. Uh, most projects aren't, aren't figured that way. And then, of course, you can add uh, any notes you want um, to, to uh, uh, record uh, for the project. Uh, click OK, uh, and you're looking at a blank, um, kind of a blank sheet here. Let me expand this a little bit, um, and you can see the uh, fields that you have to enter the basic information about your task list. Um, uh, start, finish, predecessors, resource names, uh, and so on. And there are, in addition, other columns that you can add. If you click on this, you can insert a column. Uh, and uh, you can see that you have a, a, a number to, to um, uh, choose from. Uh, and um, we're not going to go into that, but uh, be aware that that's there. Uh, so the first thing to do is just go ahead and enter your task list. Presumably, this is something that you flushed out in your planning process. Uh, so I'm going to call this our digitization project. Uh, and um, our, our um, task um, um, baskets, I guess, if you want to call it that, will create the project team. Uh, we're going to uh, review the materials that we're going to digitize. We're going to uh, determine our requirements. Uh, we're going to um, digitize. And then we're going to bring the repository online. And um, these are all the sub-elements of our digitization project. So I'm going to highlight those. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead. We're under the File menu. I'm going to switch to the Task menu by clicking Task here. Uh, and then um, on the Task menu is Indent here. Uh, when I click Indent, um, these all become subtasks. 
uh, of the uh, digitization project. Now, uh, each one of these subtasks has a list of subtasks under those. Uh, so in order to enter those, uh, I'm going to um, uh, click uh, on a task here uh, and click Insert. Um, uh, and it will insert above the um, selected line. So I'm going to uh, click uh, uh, here, Insert Twice, to insert um, two subtasks for Create Project Team, one and two. Uh, and then I'm going to um, select the project manager. Uh, and then we're going to um, select the project team, select the team members. Um, then under um, review materials, I'm going to enter three subtasks for that. One, two, three. And we're going to catalog and describe items. We're going to clear copyright. And we're going to establish image standards. E to determine requirements. Uh, and then um, for those, I'm going to add four items. And those are going to be um, review current equipment. I'm going to requisition purchase new equipment. going to install and configure the new equipment. And we're going to train and test people on the new equipment. There's going to be only one uh, activity under digitize, and that's to actually digitize once I, I finish the rest of this. So I will insert one category there, and we'll put digitize here. And then under bring the repository online, there's going to be the uh, basic uh, software installation. I might be installing Me Omeka or DSpace or something or other like that. And then there's going to be the branding. That's the customizations I need to do for my look and feel. Uh, there's going to be um, loading the digital items that we've digitized. Uh, then we need to test it. And finally, we need to deploy it, make it available to the public. Now, what we need to do is um, uh, uh, select the sub-projects under each of the major product categories and indent those uh, so we can look at those as groups of items. Uh, so under Create the Project Team, I'm going to highlight, select Project Manager, and select Team Members, and I'm going to click Indent. Uh, and as you can see, that makes this little bracket here. Um, uh, that's going to bracket um, the um, select project manager and select team members. I'm going to do the same thing here uh, for these three items. Uh, catalog and describe items, clear copyright and establish image standards and guidelines. Uh, those are highlighted. I'm going to indent those. Similarly, uh, these four items. I'm going to click indent. Under digitize, there's only one. And then under Bring a Repository Online, the rest of our items here. I'm going to get a click indent. Uh, and now we have our, our categories set up. I can collapse these if I just want to look at the, uh, at the major categories. I can um, open any one of them up individually. I can open them all up. 
uh, and so on. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to put in our estimated durations uh, for these. Again, this is something we would have established in our planning session. Uh, I'm going to assume that the project manager is going to take one day. Uh, I'm going to assume that selecting the team members might take three days. Uh, cataloging and describing uh, the items might take one week. And notice it changes one week to five days. There's a calendaring system. You can adjust how long the work week is, uh, when it starts, when it ends, and so on. Uh, and it'll figure all that out. I'm not going to demonstrate that. Uh, but be aware that there is a comprehensive calendaring system uh, that you can use to uh, make those adjustments. Uh, I'm going to say that clearing copyright is probably going to take two weeks. Uh, I'm going to suggest that establishing the imaging standards uh, is going to take uh, three days. Uh, reviewing current equipment is going to take two days. Uh, it's going to take maybe um, seven days to requisition and purchase the new equipment. And by the way, this is a purely hypothetical example just to demonstrate the software. Um, this may or may not correspond to a, a rational digitization project. It would depend on a lot of circumstances. These are um, undoubtedly some of the things you'd want to consider, uh, but I'm oversimplifying this just to, to make an example for you. Uh, so I'm going to say installing and configuring the new equipment would take three days. Uh, training and testing the new equipment, uh, perhaps five days. Uh, digitization, I'm going to say, is going to take one month. Um, then as far as bringing the repository online, I'm going to say the basic installation will take two days. I'm going to say the branding is going to take um, five days. Uh, loading the digitized items once they've been digitized and configured, I'm going to say that's going to take ten days or two weeks. Uh, testing is going to take five days or one week. And deployment is going to take, say, two days. Okay, so we have our system in. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, and to do that, I need to go back to File, and I'm going to Save As. And I'll um, uh, pause the tape here while I navigate through my system so you don't have to watch me do that. All right, I've got that saved now. That's always a good idea to save now and then. And we'll go back to task here. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to uh, actually connect these. Uh, and um, what we need to do is to figure out our critical path, what tasks are dependent on other tasks. There are a couple of ways you can do that. Um, I could, um, I'll, I'll just show you how... Um, uh, that can be done. You can select a couple of them, or as many of them as you like, and, and select link. Uh, the default, if we take a look at this, um, uh, is a finish to start. That is, you have to finish this one uh, before you can start this one, uh, and that's a default. Um, but there are other choices. So the other choices are uh, you can arrange to finish them, uh, at the same point in time, um, finish to finish. Uh, you can arrange, and, and I know that looks a little bit weird because we're starting at the same time, so uh, if we move them out farther, um, they, they would end up at the same time. Um, there is um, finish to start. There's start to finish, uh, which means that... Um, uh, you, you, you start one and then you finish the other while you're finishing the other. Again, it, it's a little, it doesn't look quite right on, on this because we, they would need to be farther out. Um, uh, or you can do um, uh, another typical one uh, is start to start. That is, they start at the same time. This might become more obvious as we go through these. Um, uh, but, but those are the four kinds of of um, links that you can make, which is start to finish, finish to finish, finish to start, start to finish, um, and start to start. Okay, so let's go through and start to work through um, how 
uh, and for right, let's see, um, we'll remove that one for right now. Uh, so we're going to start the project. We can't do anything until we select a project manager. Uh, and then we would normally um, select our team members after the project manager's been selected. So this is a um, finish to start relationship. You have to finish selecting the project managers before you select the team members. So the other way that you can do this is just to drag one onto the other and it creates the typical finish to start relationship. You finish this one before you start this one. Uh, and you can't do really anything else until you um, uh, have gotten your project manager and team members ready. So let's think then about what else um, we, need, we can do after that. Um, we need to catalog and describe the items. Um, so that will follow. Again, I can pull this down uh, and it will do our finish to start. Uh, but it looks like while we're cataloging and describing, we can also clear copyright at the same time. Uh, so I can pull this one down on this one, but then I can adjust oops, by double clicking on it or clicking on it. I can arrange this um, so that it's start to start. We can start both of those at the same time. And then um, establish the image standards. We can't really um, establish the image standards until we've looked at all of the items. Uh, so I'm going to drag this one onto this one and make that a finish um, to start relationship. Uh, so um, uh, as far as reviewing the current equipment, uh, we can probably also start doing that at the same time we are starting to catalog and describe things, assuming we have enough team members to do that. Uh, so I'm going to pull this one down to this one uh, and make that a start to start. Oops, wrong one. That will, this is one of the bugs that I found with this. This will redraw properly when we, um, uh, when we um, save and, and open it up again. It doesn't, it doesn't always put those in the right place. Um, and so let's see, let's go on here. Um, we can't really uh, requisition and purchase anything until we see what we've already got. So that's a standard finish to start. Uh, we can install it and configure it until uh, we've uh, requisitioned and purchased it, and we can't train on it until we've got it. So these are all uh, kind of standard um, uh, finish to start relationships here. Uh, and so um, now what we need to do is we need to digitize it. Uh, and we can't really do that until we've gotten all of our equipment in. So uh, this is a standard uh, finish to start as well. Now what we see developing is this red line. This, um, what we see in red is what we call the critical path. That is, um, this is what's going to determine uh, up to where we are so far when the project ends. Um, now, uh, as far as... Um, uh, installing the server, again, assuming we have um, the people to do it, um, we can start this back here as soon as we have our, our project team set up. Uh, so we can put that one there, uh, and then we um, can't do the branding until we have the basic setup. Uh, and we can't do the loading. until we have the digitizing, but, but this can actually start at the same time. Once we uh, start digitizing, we can start loading. Uh, so we can change this to a start to start. Uh, and then this is no longer on the critical path because we're going to, uh, um, we're, 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 we can do the loading, but um, actually this is a finish to finish.
So we'll finish, um, we'll finish loading when we finish digitizing. Um, and um, we can get started at any time, but um, until we finish digitizing, we won't have everything loaded. Uh, and then of course, um, test and deploy, we can't do till everything's in. And so that's pretty much what our um, um, Gantt chart looks like. This is the Gantt chart part of it. Uh, and um, uh, we've established our critical path. So we can see that if we start um, here on uh, June 18th, this is what I've got when I'm recording this, um, then our finish date is going to be August 22nd. Uh, and of course, we can come back in and adjust this um, as things um, uh, get delayed or take longer, or if we finish them up sooner, uh, we can take a baseline. Uh, there's a way to take a baseline in here and um, uh, make some assumptions about what happens if things take longer or we finish sooner. Uh, but this is the basic idea now. Uh, the second component of this, there are a couple of different ways to look at it. Uh, it creates a work breakdown structure as we go along, so we can take a look at the work breakdown structure here. Uh, that it creates automatically uh, with the different phases. Uh, and we can also look at a network view uh, of the project. Um, and uh, this is basically just another way of looking at it. Uh, there's task usage we haven't really um, uh, gotten into uh, the resources and so on yet, but um, uh, we can look at uh, the task usage as we assign people to these, uh, these tasks and so on. Now the next thing we want to do, um, uh, and I'm only going to dip into this very lightly, but um, we also want to know project costing and so on, and this program can do that as well. Uh, so let's go over and take a look at resource uh, and look at our resources. So I'm clicking on the resource tab uh, and then the resources sheet. Um, and here is where you can assign resources. Resources can either be work, that is people doing work, or it can be materials, things that you buy or use. Uh, I'll give two very simple examples. Let's suppose that we want students. So we're going to hire some students to do the digitization portion of this. Uh, and so we'll call, um, maybe we're going to hire two of them. That's our plan. Student one, um, and it defaults to work, and it puts some other stuff in uh, here uh, for us automatically, max units. Um, and we need to enter an hourly rate. Um, so I'll put in $25 an hour. in an overtime rate of 50. Uh, cost per use, uh, leave that at zero. Uh, the rest of the stuff is filled in. Uh, base calendar is a standard calendar. And I'll put in student two. Uh, same thing here. I don't expect we're actually going to hire students um, and then pay them overtime at 50 an hour, but just to put something in. Uh, and then we can also uh, have, have materials. Um, uh, part of our plan there was to determine whether we needed equipment, but I'm assuming that um, we've now found out that we need a scanner. Uh, so we'll put in a scanner. We'll drop this down. That's material. Uh, and um, this just comes out to a dollar cost. Uh, and that's... Um, we don't attach a cost to use, but if it costs so much per hour to run, we could we could put in uh, an hourly rate for that um, if it costs so much to, an hour to run. Uh, and that's all we need to fill in for that. Uh, so now that we can, we have those entered, we can go back to our um, uh, Gantt chart uh, and we could look at um, our digitization here. Uh, and we can um, assign resources uh, to that task. So uh, I can put 100% of student 1 and 100% of student 2 uh, and assign those. Uh, and that's um, that'll be okay. 
Uh, and then uh, I can go to our train and test. We're going to need to train the students on that. Uh, I can assign those resources 100% um, of student one and 100% of student two to those. Uh, and uh, that's good. And then here with requisition purchase new equipment, uh, I can assign the resource to that. Uh, and that's where we're going to put the, um, um, we're going to buy one scanner. Uh, and we're going to assign that. Uh, so where does that get us? Um, well, we can see it's added those to our Gantt chart, but then when we go back and look at our work breakdown structure, um, we can see that our digitization project, now the total project cost uh, is 7,500, uh, and we see that um, uh, we now have um, requisition purchase, $2,500, and then when we go over to um, our training and testing, in the work breakdown structure, we can see that we have $1,000. Um, that's the cost of our student workers. And then in digitization, we have $4,000 now. Uh, so um, we can look at that from the network view uh, as well uh, and see our, uh, see our um, duration here. Uh, and uh, we can also go to um, view uh, report. Uh, and get reports out um, that show uh, the work scheduled, uh, the, the remaining number of days, the remaining number of hours, and then the costs. Uh, and there are a few, other, um, a few other reports that you can get out of here. Uh, there are also some charts that you can get out of here. Um, uh, the um, resource usage, um, if we go back to our, our Gantt chart, uh, as we're going along here. Uh, as you get more of this filled in, you would see scanner uh, usage showing up here. You can see the scanner, where we purchased the scanner here over two days, that um, uh, our work has gone from zero to maximum work on purchasing the scanner. Uh, so you can play around with that. Uh, the documentation is, is not particularly good. Um, the best way to figure this out really is to play around with it. Um, this is about all uh, that I'm planning on going through. You can also turn off that sub-window by clicking uh, no sub-window. Uh, and, um, and then, of course, um, you can go to the file network uh, to save this uh, and then um, close it out. Uh, so this covers the, the main points that I want to, uh, uh, to go over with you, to show you how, how to enter the task list, how to break it down into sub-projects, how to enter the days, um, you know, how to think out your, your timeline uh, and your critical path analysis, uh, the different kinds of uh, relationships you can have between tasks, whether it's um, finish to start, which is the usual method, but you can have finish to finish start to start, uh, and so on. Uh, and then taking a look at uh, the work breakdown structure, um, which is the next most common report that um, managers typically want. Uh, and then also uh, how to look at your resources uh, and uh, so on. And the only other thing that I, I, I want to mention uh, that I'm not going to demonstrate here, uh, but as you go along, uh, you can mark these tasks complete or in process or so on. So uh, as you go along with the project, you can track the project, see where you are, see how much is complete. Uh, and this allows you to do some other kinds of reporting. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, and um, if you have any questions, post them to the comments. Thank you.